just wanted to do a little introductory video to those just coming into the trade and talking about the appliance itself. Now, part of the HVAC trade has to do with installing the appliance. In this case, we're going to look at a furnace because a furnace really incorporates pretty well all of the different skill sets that we're going to need, uh, meaning that not only is it the appliance, we also have to be able to perform sheet metal work. We have to be able to perform the venting process. We have to be able to do the gas piping and tubing, the high voltage electrical and the low voltage electrical just to hook up a furnace. So there, one of the things I really enjoy about the HVAC world is the fact that we do many, many different things. If we were an electrician, we'd really be doing the wiring to this piece of equipment and that'd be it. If we're a sheet metal worker strictly, we'd be doing the sheet metal portion. So being an HVAC technician, we have to have a lot of knowledge in a lot of different areas. So some of the things that I really enjoy. So you can see yourself the actual uh, box of the furnace outlined, if you will, here in the in the video. But those components are on there as well that we have to manufacture or uh, be able to purchase and put together to make this system work. So this is, if you will, an older furnace, uh, a standard efficiency furnace is what I normally like to call it. Um, standard efficiency furnaces, there's still quite a number that are out there in houses, uh, still in use today. So you will be working on these. A lot of instructors will tell you, ah, they never, never really have those around anymore. Uh, not true at all. I find that probably 40% of the calls I'm going on still have a standard efficiency furnace. So we need to understand the process. This one, for the most part, is fairly easy in the way that it has the standard efficiency application. So when we look at the actual portions of this furnace and how it works, every furnace has a heat exchanger. And that heat exchanger is going to be a paramount part about how this furnace kind of transfers heat, if you will. And I'll show you diagrams and pictures of them, uh, but just to kind of give you a shot of reality on what one of these standard efficiency furnaces looks like, I thought this would be a great opportunity. So when we look at the top, you can actually see that there's a space here. This space here actually goes on up through the vent system and into the vent pipe itself. Now, the temperature of the venting products of combustion out of this furnace are gonna be somewhere in the area um, exiting the heat exchanger. And if I'm, I'm gonna try and get up in there, hopefully you'll be able to see that there's three actual cells to the heat exchanger. So the actual products of combustion come out of those holes and come out and mix with the room air here and then get propelled on up through the vent. It's about 450 degrees Fahrenheit heading up through this vent. So this vent, when it's operating, is very hot. You don't want to put your hands on it. <clears throat> this venting system works with natural convections of air. There's nothing pushing the air up other than the fact that that hot flue gas is lighter and it naturally wants to progress up. So we use this venting system to then go to a main stack venting system called a B-vent, which you could find in your house, which basically will vertically go on out through your ceiling. Hopefully you'll be able to see when I get the obstructions out of the way, it going up through the ceiling itself, but there's nothing mechanical pushing those hot flue gases out of this furnace, okay? So part of what we have to have is knowledge and how this flue gas system works, how to size it appropriately, and be able to get rid of those products of combustion that are created by this furnace. So when we look at this furnace, that's a venting section, and I showed you the top end of the heat exchanger with those cells. The bottom end of the heat exchanger is gonna be down here that the burners actually go into. So you can see this is burner number one, burner number two, and burner number three here. These burners are atmospheric burners and are lit by a pilot light. You can see there's the pilot assembly back there on this particular furnace. So the pilot light, when everything is lit, that pilot burns 24 hours a day, seven days a week, waiting for a call for heat from this furnace. And what ends up happening at that point, when we actually have the thermostat, which in this case we have up there on the wall, we've got it mounted. Um, normally it'd be in the living room, dining room, a hallway, somewhere remote to the actual furnace itself. In this case, we have it in close proximity and you can see that we actually have a wire and that control wire goes in and actually attaches to this furnace and tells the furnace to come on. When that furnace gets a signal to come on, this is called the gas valve. And the gas valve is gonna be the main control valve 
which is going to open to allow gas to flow to the rest of the furnace and start heating up the house. When we have an unsafe situation or when the thermostat says we're, we're hot enough in the house, it shuts off the gas valve. By uh, basically removing the signal from this gas valve, there's a solenoid valve that shuts and shuts off the flow of gas. Now, if the gas is flowing, you're gonna see the gas actually flows out and actually goes down. There's orifices right back in behind where my finger is on all three of these burners. So the orifices is where the gas actually shoots out, which mixes with air from the room, which you can see right where my finger is and those shutters on those three burners allow air from the room to mix with that gas at which point it is then ignited. Now, this one has a cover on it and I can remove that cover to get in behind to show you a little better and I'll do that in a later video. But basically what happens here is when that gas, um, that gas valve opens and gas now comes back through, goes into burner number one, burner number two, and burner number three sequentially, the pilot light is gonna, gonna ignite that fuel coming out of there where we're gonna get a large flame. That large flame now, sits inside the heat exchanger. And the fire that happens inside the heat exchanger will never come into contact with the air going through the house. So the heat exchanger is in behind this section. And what we're seeing here, what I'm trying to show video of is your main, um, one of your main safety controls. This is called a combination fan and limit control. And the combination fan and limit control um, is responsible for turning on the blower, turning off the blower, and shutting off the gas valve in the event of an overheat situation, okay? So it is connected so that it basically will kill the signal of this guy in the event that we have an unsafe situation. The blower that I'm talking about is down here. Now in this case, it's an older style belt drive blower, like a lot of your older furnaces were. Now that blower blows air around the heat exchanger which of course transfers heat from inside the heat exchanger, that hot gas that's burning in there, and of course exhausting back up through here. But what we're gonna have is air is going in between these heat exchanger cells from down here on the blower. It blows up in between and around the outside of those cells picking up the heat. So what ends up happening is those products of combustion will then come up and go through our vent pipe the heat that we're actually talking about that is circulated by our blower down here is going to come up through the furnace and it's going to go into our supply air plenum, which then basically is going to spread the heat through the house. Now, if you've got central air conditioning, there's going to be a part that we can install in the supply air plenum called the evaporator coil, which is going to be the indoor section of your central air conditioning system. In the winter time, we don't even bother with this. It sits in there, but it doesn't do anything. And the heated air goes up through and then comes out in what we call a plenum takeoff or a PTO for short. And that's this fitting here, which I manufacture. It will then run into pre-made, typically pre-purchased ductwork, which then will extend across through the room with what we call takeoffs. And those takeoffs are gonna take that heated or cooled air to each individual room of your house. I want to do some more videos which are going to show the ductwork in that application as we move on. But just to kind of give you an idea, there's the basics of how a furnace really operates uh, at that point. There's the gas piping on the side, which is of course going to supply the natural gas or propane supply into this particular furnace. So we also are going to have infrastructure somewhere through, uh, at that point, the house that's going to give us that gas supply. Uh, as we require. When we look into newer pieces of equipment, uh, an example now is what we call a high efficiency piece of equipment. Still does essentially the same thing. A lot of those parts are still gonna be the same. One of the things that's gonna be the same at that point is gonna be you're gonna have your supply air plenum coming off with your PTO, which you see there. You're also gonna have your return air bringing that stale room air back into the furnace. You're gonna have a heat exchanger, looks different, um, basically than the old standard efficiency heat exchanger, but really performs the same function. The fire stays inside the actual furnace uh, and goes out through the vent pipe. Now, this one has a set of plastic pipes on it. This one here is gonna be for fresh air coming in. This one here is gonna be for your exhaust going out, back outside. 
The reason they're plastic is that the flue gas temperature is much lower. Part of the efficiency on a piece of equipment like this or how they gain such efficiency is they lower the temperature of the flue gas that is being exhausted to the outdoors. So in this case, we talked about 450 degree uh, exhausting up through the vent system on the older style furnace. This one will have a flue gas temperature around 110, 115 degrees, maybe 120. So now we can use plastic at that point because it's not hazardous. We aren't gonna get burned by it or have problems where it's gonna melt the plastic. So we can use plastic in this case. You might say, well, why do we have two pipes? The other one brings in fresh air from the outside. The older furnace that we had over here takes room air. We need room air down here to mix with the gas to, to have proper combustion. We also need room air to go in here to mix with that hot flue gas from behind to propel that on up through the venting system. That's very inefficient because we're using air that we actually paid to heat now to go on back out through the system itself. The high efficiency model that we had here has that second pipe that brings air in from the outside. So it has a dedicated pathway from the outside to bring air in for proper combustion, just a little more efficient. The other thing is we don't have to worry about chemicals in the indoors that could mess up our combustion process or become problematic because we have this dedicated pipe at that point. Again, we've got a different style, but it's still an air conditioning coil that's mounted on top of the furnace to provide for the central air conditioning for this particular spot. So again, there'll be a main blower. The main blower on this particular furnace is gonna be down on the bottom. You see the door should pop up. This blower though, is gonna be different in the way that it's a direct drive blower. So it isn't an old belt drive, but the blower really operates in the same way. Another vast difference you're gonna see is the main control board or the brain to this furnace is right mounted on the front of the blower itself. So it looks a little bit different than the, uh, than the older style which we were talking about. As far as This thing to come out. So on this one, we're going to see other parts, but you're still going to see your burners up top here. Again, we've got three burners here. We still have a gas valve. That's going to be this guy. It looks a little different than the last one, but really functions the same way. It's a valve that's going to bring the gas, uh, at which point we've got a gas line, obviously out here to the side, that's going to serve that gas coming down and into that equipment, just the same as the other one did. Now, no pilot light on this particular piece of equipment. This has what we call a hot surface igniter, and the hot surface igniter is right up there at the tip of my fingers. That's what these two wires are running toward. That hot surface igniter basically ignites the gas as it flows by the hot surface igniter. Another component which you won't see on a standard efficiency furnace is what we call um, an exhauster, inducer, or venter assembly, all three terms are commonly used. That's what this guy is. Now, before we talked about natural draft, which meant that only the warm flue gas was responsible, if you will, for getting that flue gas outside on the older furnace. On this one, the venter motor is actually gonna propel or push the products of combustion on up through this, this pipe to the outdoors. So this one does have a mechanical requirement to get rid of the exhaust gas. There's a safety on here because if this motor fails or isn't pushing enough air, this whole system could falter and fill the house with carbon monoxide. So we have a safety down here. This is called a pressure switch. Um, the pressure switch is typically gonna be used to ensure that this thing is moving enough air. And if it's not, it shuts down the operation of all of the equipment. The heat exchanger in behind here, we talked about a high limit on the other furnace. The high limit, you can, you can barely see it in between the pipe and the gas valve here. I'm gonna try and get a better view of the high limit. Eh, it's hard to do, but okay. So there's your high limit up top. Again, it's gonna sense temperature. So in the event that the temperature on this furnace gets too hot, it's going to be able to shut down the equipment itself. So there are a lot of similarities, but a lot of differences when it comes to new furnaces versus old furnaces, and we'll be talking about them all coming up here.